Help support the companies that support our community. I started out with a piece of maple. It's five by five by nine inches long. And I use a roughing gouge to get most of the corners knocked off before switching over to the spindle gouge to bring it down a little bit more. I put a tenon on the headstock side so that I can grab it into the chuck a little bit later and then I continue using the spindle gouge to shape the outside of it. So what I'm gonna do with this is do kind of an emerging vase. Robin found one on Pinterest that she really likes, so I'm gonna go ahead and try and do that. I've never done one like this. I've done some emerging vases, but not this kind. So what I'm gonna do is come in with the parting tool and bring down the very top of it. So it's gonna look like that part of the vase is actually coming out of the other one, and I will carve out some more it's more of the lower part here in a second, but I'm just trying to create a vase that looks like it's popping, popping through the top of it at this point right here. Now that I have the shape all done, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the chuck and hollow out the inside of it. So I'm gonna use a Forstner bit first and then I'll go back and come along, come in after that with the number one hauler and finish hollowing out the inside of it. Now that I have that done, I'm just going to go ahead and trace uh, where I want to carve on the outside of it. And so it's just kind of a, you know, random organic shape. Um, I'm trying to make it look a little bit like the one that, that uh, Robin liked on uh, that she found. So just kind of nice, even get the lines to flow nice around the outside of it. So I'm using the pencil here, but when I go back through and actually start the carving, I just kind of refine all that. So the power carver is fantastic for this. It, it there are different chisels you can put in it. It works really well. Nice makes a nice smooth cut. And so if you're not familiar with the Arbortech power carver, you put the chisels in it, and it's kind of a vibration. So you can hold onto the actual chisel while it's doing it. It doesn't like move back and forth. I mean, it does move back and forth, but it's very, very minimal and, and you can get right in and do some fine detail work with it. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing down this material here where I just drew around it 
to the diameter of that top collar that I that I turned when it was on the you know with the chisel so that it's gonna look like this thing is wrapping around a vase that's inside of it so this whole process here went through and and carved on it, it took me quite a while I did a little bit on the lathe and I switched over and I used the carving stand this carving stand works really well it's you put it in your banjo you can turn it in any direction you want so I use this a lot anytime I'm carving it's just a fantastic tool if you like doing stuff like this where you're doing detail work on a piece after you've turned it it's uh, it really is a really is a handy tool I'll have a link down below in the description to that as well and the the Arbortech carver and, and everything else I use but it's a great tool you could just spin it around in any direction you want and get to work Once I had the basic shape down with the power carver, I went ahead and switched to hand chisels. And with those, uh, just, you know, I'm trying to keep the diameter of that inner vase there even and consistent. So it actually looks like the outside of it is wrapping around it and it's all, all smooth. So went through a couple different types of hand chisels as far as the shape on them. Um, just smoothed it out. A lot of sanding after you got done, you know, just kind of cleaning it up and make, making sure it looked right. So I wanted to make the outside look kind of like a organic, a wave look to it. So with this, I used sandpaper. This is 80 grit right here. I used a rat tail file. I, so I made the larger ones with the sandpaper and then for the smaller ones, I switched to the rat tail file. And it works really well. It um, You can get kind of precise with especially the file like this and nice and, e nice and even. So I went around and did all of that. And there's, again, there's a lot of sanding with this part too. Just to kind of clean them up, especially with the the file, it's it's pretty rough. And so you got to go back through and sand them. At one point I wrapped a, some sandpaper around a little dowel to get right down in those little grooves to get it clean. So to create a contrast between the outside and the inside vase, I went ahead and used a wood burner. So I'm just going around the whole outside of the the lip where I carved out, just burning that to create a, a line. And uh, here in a second, I <clears throat> I tried to do something, but I ended up sanding it off. <laughs> and I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. But right here, I'm just going around the outside of the lines. And then I switch over and I'm gonna burn the inside vase too. So that there's a big contrast between just the regular maple and the piece inside of it. So right here, this is what, this didn't work very well. What I was trying to do was create like a shadow. And so I was burning on the, the high points, just on the sides of them, trying to create like a feathered shadow look. It didn't work well with the wood burner. So I ended up sanding all of this off and using a little torch. I ran to the store, got a little torch and used that. It worked much better and it's a lot easier to feather it out and make it look nice, nice and smooth. This was just, it's just a little bit too aggressive. I tried turning it up or turning it down and it still wasn't, wasn't working right. And for the inside, just kind of went through tried to do a random pattern on the inside and with these little little lines I put a different tip on it for this one and this worked really well it's just a you know create some texture and I end up going back through with the torch and burning this a little bit too to darken it up a little bit
So there's a little little torch and I went ahead and just went over everything. And so the lines now that are, are burnt off the, the texture part on the outside, that I used the torch for that. Just held it at an angle and let it let it kind of feather it out. It worked work looks much better than, than the darker ones. And I just went over the whole thing to kind of darken it up a little bit more. Then I ran over the whole piece with 600, just kind of trying to blend it in and, and feather it. And once I got that all done, went ahead and took it out of the chuck and put in a little little jam uh, jam chuck that I had. It fit right into the, the neck of it. Put a little bit of painter's tape on it, just wrapped it around it once and then just so it had a little bit of a grip and then put the piece back on. Once I had it back on there, I used a spindle gouge to bring the foot down. And once I got close, I switched over to the Easywood detailer to bring down that little point in the center. As far as sanding it goes, I didn't want to to blend, you know, to sand off too much of the burn marks. So what I did is I sanded the whole piece all the way up to 400 and just by hand and then went ahead and switched to 600 just for the very last last bit of it. And this is the doctor's walnut oil. So I coat the whole thing down and sand it with that. That way it's not sanding off the, the burn, burn marks on any of it. There we go, I got it all done. I've done a couple of merging vases, but nothing like this, so I thought it'd be a fun project. Robin found found something similar to this on, on uh, Pinterest, and it was looked really cool. So I really like the way it came out. The burning kind of sets it apart, you know, gives it a nice contrast. So it's out of maple. It's about four and a half inches in diameter, about eight or, eight or so inches tall, but it was a fun project. I, yeah, as far as burning those, that little torch, um, I used those for, and some other stuff I'd done, but uh, they had burned up a while ago, so I had to run to the store and grab a new one, but it was a fun project. Yeah, the carving stand works fantastic for doing stuff like this. The Arbor Tech for taking down the bulk of the material is fantastic, and I just, the burning is, I always like doing like basket illusion stuff, but it was a fun project. All right, I hope everybody enjoyed the video. I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. And a remi quick reminder too, the pizza cutter challenge, I will put a link down below to do that. That is still going on through the end of the month. And then December 9th, Saturday, we have another demo at the Woodcraft in Tigard, Oregon. So I hope to see you there. All right, have a great weekend and we will see you later.